Hello and welcome. Today we're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about carpules. Carpules are the way that local anaesthetic solution is produced and uh, provided for dental use. Carpules always come sealed in a plastic wrap and this is where I've cut one carpule away from the plastic wrap so you can just see one on its own but you can see it's sealed in this blister pack. These have been uh, uh, sterilized so once they st so as whilst they remain sealed within the blister pack it uh, prevents any uh, bacteria, viruses or any other contaminants getting on the carpule. So the first thing you do before you get a carpel out is actually just check by running your finger around it that uh, the carpule still remains sealed within its packet. And once you remove it from its packet, the carpel looks like this. And there's a few key features to a carpel. The first thing is that it contains just over 2 millilitres of solution and all dental carpules are preset with about the same volume. It has a uh, end with a gold or metallic looking end to it and the other end has this sort of rubbery looking end to it and the actual carpule itself is made of glass and uh, it has a, a bunch of writing on the surface of it. First thing that you should do when you get a carpule out is actually read the carpule. If I bring it up into the light here, you may be able to see. On the back, it will have a stamped use by date. Now, local anaesthetic usually has a reasonably long use by date. I think this one, if I'm looking correctly there, has a date of 2013 on it. And we're currently only in the first half of 2012. So, you know, a year and a half or two years. When you actually look at the writing itself, and you can see here, this carpule contains, this is the name of the uh, type of local anaesthetic that's in it. This is called a lignocaine special. This is by a company called Astra, so uh, the writing is in blue. Um, be careful. One of the traps of local anaesthetic is just if you rely upon the colours, you can get caught out with different brands with different drugs in them. So this is lignocaine special. Make sure you read it. And I once got a tip from a pilot friend of mine that uh, they train pilots so they don't read over things without actually acknowledging, it, acknowledging what they read is to actually read it backwards and that forces you to actually concentrate. So that's a good tip just to make sure you're reading the right thing. Read it from the back to the front to force yourself to read it properly. And the other element you'll see is fine print on these carpules and it's probably too fine to pick up but let's see if we can get a little bit into focus here no it's not going to work in the smaller print below the name you actually see what sort of um, vasoconstrictor that this solution also contains because um, most, most local anaesthetics come with some sort of vasoconstrictor now what I've been doing to actually show you this carpule is what you don't want to do when you uh, take the carpule out of its packet and that is to put your fingers anywhere near this end of the carpule. This metallic end, and if you look closely at the metallic end, can you notice that it's got a little piece of rubber in the middle of it there? This is the area where the needle will actually go through that little piece of rubber and engage into the solution within the carpule itself. So when you remove a carpule from its packet, you always remove it from the end with the rubber in. You never put your hands or fingers near this end here because you don't want to contaminate it with bacteria and viruses and things like I'm doing now because when the needle goes through it, you want this to remain as close to sterile as practicable. The other end of a carpule, this end down here, the rubber end, and in fact it's no longer rubber. Historically it was rubber, but we found that people had allergies to rubber and uh, we had awful allergic reactions from the rubber um, slowly dispersing through the solution. So these are now made of silicon. Um, is the little 
there's a little sort of indentation in this rubber area here. And if you remember back to the video that you saw on uh, the syringe, you'll note that this is where the barbs of the plunger of the syringe actually engage in th this uh, bung, as we call it. And that, as it moves down the tube, when you press on the syringe from up here, that rubber bung moving up and down this, well, downward mainly, will push the liquid out through the needle on this end of the carpule. So this is a, a classic dental carpule. Now while we're here, we might look back at the syringe and just remind ourselves of how this uh, process of putting the carpule into the syringe actually works. Remember I showed you that you actually undo that rotation and you can open up the syringe. The carpule itself, remembering we took it out of its packet in a safe way, so we didn't put our fingers on this uh, metallic end. You just drop the carpule into the barrel of the syringe, and now you can see it in the barrel, and you can see that little window in the barrel that allows you to actually continue to read what's in it, and in the end it will allow you to see if you've aspirated any blood as you use it. You then rotate the syringe to the closed position and re-tighten up this screw mechanism. When you get it in the right spot, there we go. And now you have that carpule ready for use in the syringe.